Um, there's some exciting news in the Eric Bell camp this year. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell us what's happening? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I, I'm um, recording a new album, which I'm really looking forward to. I think that starts around the 2nd of July. So I'll be home for the 12th. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm looking forward to that and working with yourself and Mark again. And a uh, few gigs coming up. Um, Exile was very, very well received, uh, the last solo album. Um, massive coverage everywhere, really, all over the world. Five mm. page spreads in Premier Guitar magazine. Sure. Um, how, would you, how would you describe the new album in terms of any direction different from, from how Exile was? Um, <clears throat> in a way, I suppose it, rem it reminds me of Exile a bit like Exile Part 2 nearly, because all the tracks are different from each other again. Um, there's some slow ones, there's some ballads, there's a sort of a jazzy one or two, there's blues, there's acoustic blues. <clears throat> so it's, it's covering quite a wide spectrum again. And I believe you've decided on a title for the album, which is? <laughs> <laughs> um, stop it. It's uh, called uh, Standing at a Bus Stop. And what was the backstory to that? Well, it was the time I was in Dublin and it was a very, very dying time. And uh, one night I was standing at this bus stop with, with my guitar <clears throat> going home. And I just, I just got this idea of this uh, song. Um, basically what it was, was when I came down to Dublin first, in 1969, <clears throat> I had to go for an audition to join this show band, and the audition was held in Desmond Dominican's School of Therapy and Drama. <clears throat> and years and years and years later, I'm standing at a bus stop right outside Desmond Dominican's, and so many things have happened since the show band and then through Thin Lizzy and so on and so on. And I just I just got this idea of, there's a song here, definitely, you know, standing at a bus stop, you know. It kind of represents a, a big uh, turning point in your life, kind of. Well, it, 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 it was, as I said, it was a very down time in, in Dublin for me at that particular time. And um, I was feeling very bitter and disillusioned about things, you know what I mean? And I just, uh, this school of therapy and drama, uh, Desmond Dominicans, it just kept coming into my head, you know. I thought, right, I was here about 18 years ago, 20 years ago, on this very spot, uh, doing an audition for a show band, which I got, and then left the show band, Thin Lizzy Farm. And we used to rehearse in Desmond Dominican's Thin Lizzy, which was strange as well. And now, years after Thin Lizzy, I'm standing outside Desmond Dominican's again, but it's very down, you know? It's a very reflective uh, It is, track. yeah, yeah. And can we be expecting to hear some, uh, some of that uh, magical guitar work? All different, different sort of genres they say today, I can't even pronounce the name, but um, yeah there's one in particular, uh, it's an Irish thing about the Irish coming over from Ireland and living in London trying to make good and it's called the pavements paved with gold but um, on the guitar I'm I'm trying to make it sound like a banjo so I'm muting yeah. the notes so I hope that's going to work you know, sounds great. I, I I have it I have it in my head, but whether you know that's the whole thing, having it in your head and then bringing it out in the studio. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, it's you know I'm lucky to have that. Mark Winterburn mixing yeah. and also your good self. So <clears throat> I think it should be pretty good. We were talking before, and you were mentioning that um, one of your personal heroes, guitar heroes, is Django Reinhardt. Oh. 
tell us a little bit about that and how you got to get into Django it. Django Reinhardt was, uh, I was about, might have been about 16 and I was living in Belfast. And I used to go to this incredible market in Belfast called Smithfield that they bombed during the Troubles. But this place was unbelievable. And it was under a big glass dome. And they had just hundreds of stalls that sold anything from German helmets to false limbs and peacock feathers, just anything at all was you could buy. Uh, I actually walked into this particular market. There was a little woman who had a record shop, um, quite a small shop, but she had speakers outside the shop so you could hear what she was playing on the turntable. And I walked past this day and I heard this music which just, uh, it was like a, a life-changing moment. And I just kept listening to it and I said, God almighty, this guy is, he's just exactly what I want to do, you know? And I walked into the shop and I said, excuse me, but who's that playing outside? That's Django Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> and a very broad Belfast accent. Uh, she says, uh, he was a gypsy, you know, lived in a caravan and he, he uh, was caught in a fire when he was 18 and he got very badly burnt and they were going to amputate his, le his right leg. He was so badly burnt and also um, do a lot of work on his hand. And his third and fourth finger of the left, the fretting hand, it sort of melted, the flesh melted. God. So he ended up like this this huge scarred hand that was all like this. In fact, I've got a photograph of it on my camera if you want to see it later. And uh, it, it just made him more intriguing to me, you know. Um, and to have a willpower like that, like they brought him into hospital and they were going to amputate and um, he was a real gypsy. He lived in a caravan and lived that life. So two or three of his gypsy friends came in to the hotel a few nights later and they brought his clothes and he put them on and he left the hospital. God, nice. uh, he said he didn't want amputation and he learned to walk again after a year using crutches yeah. and he, he relearned the guitar yeah. and started making up his own um, chord inversions and his melodic lines he is just, he's a one-off. He's a one-off. Yeah, there's no one like him. And probably never will be, you know. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous player. Okay, Eric, well, thanks for your time. And on behalf of everybody, uh, on the you Facebook pages and everything. Leave the check on the... On, leave the check on, on the... On, bed, on, on the <laughs> <laughs> and we're all looking forward to, to hearing the album. We, we can't wait. So all the best and thanks, nice Eric. One. Thank you, Andy. And can we be expecting to hear some uh, some of that uh, magical guitar work coming uh, coming oh, to no, the fore? No, no, no. Uh, not I'm, thinking of that. I'm playing uh, trombone. <laughs> <laughs> she, it's a it's a brand new direction um, for you. Brand new direction. <laughs> Actually, my pet tortoise friend. <laughs>